Is the earth round or is it flat? Now, I don't think we're going to answer that question. What? What do you mean you're not going to answer the question? Hey YouTube, my name's Matthew Cortman and this is Bible Scholar Reacts, a series of videos in which I, a biblical scholar, react to some of the craziest stuff you can find on the internet. Today we are going to be looking at an individual called Walter Vyth. He runs amazing discoveries, an independent ministry that's associated with Seventh-day Adventism. All disclosure, I myself am a Seventh-day Adventist. Also full disclosure, most professional Seventh-day Adventists find his ministry problematic. If Christ came at exactly 4,000 years after Adam sinned. And if we add 2,000 years, could the world end in 2027 according to this calculation? Is it possible, I'm just asking the question, if so, then Christ must come sometime before 2027 to allow this. I don't know, I'm not making a time. I'm saying that the time is short. And there's actually been quite a lot of requests for me to actually react to Vyth uh, and issues that he raises. But today's episode, without getting into a ton of details, is going to be focused on the weird issue of a flat Earth. It's pretty remarkable that in the year 20, uh, 2020, when this was made, this is still an issue to be discussed. So the video is titled Walter Vyth and Martin Smith, Three Days, Three Nights, Earth Round or Flat, Organic Farming, W... U Prof 23. Anyways, it's not a really catchy title, as you can see, but it's been viewed 101,000 times. He basically does a big Q&A session, and it was published on August 6, 2020. So let's go ahead and watch as Vyth is asked whether the world is round or flat. But before we continue any further, I just want to give a shout out and a thank you to our sponsor for this video, which is Adventist Today. So Adventist Today, I'm so happy that they believe in creators like me and want this kind of material to get out there. And I'm certainly happy that they are encouraging and promoting other voices in Adventism who otherwise would not have that kind of uh, platform or attention. So please go ahead and check them out if you're happy that they are helping to promote material like this video. And then we get, we get this question a lot. Yes. What? I don't know whether to be scared more by the fact that somebody's asking this question and he's legitimizing it by putting it on screen, or I should be more concerned that he gets the question a lot. Like how many of your audience of 100, 1,000 people is genuinely concerned that the earth is flat? But I digress, let us continue. Let's hear his answer to the question that he receives so very much. Yes. Is the earth round or is it flat? Now, I don't think we're going to answer that question. What? What do you mean you're not going to answer the question? There's only one answer to that question. <laughs> There's only one answer to this. The answer is not, we're not going to give an answer. The answer is not, the world is flat. The answer is, it is round. It is round round holy mackerel we can we can answer it with a statement right yes oh you are going to answer it what statement so let's look at the statement this is a letter that was written in 1887 man we have to go back to 1887 to address a, a round or flat earth it's from the spirit of prophecy oh boy oh boy oh boy oh boy so it is okay. So uh, this is this has now entered the world of cultish language. So basically, uh, the person who wrote this letter was Ellen Gould White, Ellen G. White. She's one of the three founders of the denomination I belong to, Seventh Day Adventism. And when you hear an Adventist refer to her historic writings, none even more so here, a letter that she wrote to a specific person privately. And they refer to this as the spirit of prophecy. They're essentially telling you that they think that anything and everything she wrote's inerrant. That in some sense, it's guided by God. That there's absolutely nothing she says privately that reflects Ellen White. So they basically deny her her historical viability as an independent woman. And they're equating her words as if they're gods. This this just gives cult vibes all over. And, and 
this is not an agreement with how the Adventist church sees Ellen White. This is not an agreement with how Adventist pastors would treat Ellen White uh, professionally. This, this is already going off the deep end in terms of how he's addressing and treating Ellen White as a resource in the Adventist church. Okay, let's, let's continue. And she was writing to a brother who, who was for the flat earth. And uh, was for the flat earth in 1887, prior to us going into space and seeing the world's roundness. Pers like, I don't know why I'm trying to spend so much time illustrating this point. Let's keep going. This is so stupid. Uh, he had some ideas and he was very strong in terms of these ideas. And he felt that this should be made a central part of the teaching. Yes. It does matter whether or not a pastor can admit that the world is round. That, that does matter because it, one, suggests that you have a completely insane level of ignorance or you don't value truth that deeply uh, to make a stand. Moreover, when you're talking about Walter Weith, who literally prides himself on being scientist. Dr. Weith holds a bachelor's of science with an honors distinction a master's in zoology with a cum laude distinction, and holds a PhD in zoology from the University of Cape Town. Dr. Walter Weith, a scientist of the highest academic rank, and that he can teach you the truth about why evolution is scientifically wrong and why, in fact, uh, you know, creationism is better and why these other issues. And you can't even go ahead and confirm the most basic of scientific facts that the earth is round. Then, yeah, I, I think that while it's not a salvation issue, whether you believe it or not, it certainly says something about the trustworthiness of the minister and the viability of the spirituality of the person. Because if they're willing to believe the earth is flat, their spirituality is pretty much open to any so-called satanic deceptions since they're that easily duped and that ignorant. I think we can leave it there. Uh... Is it wrong to study these things? Is it wrong to study any aspect of science? I don't think so. But if we make it prominent that we have a specific view in this area, you will have confrontation with those who have another view in this area. So wait, 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 wait. So your takeaway, Vaith, is that because there will be a confrontation between two people of opposing views that this is unhealthy for the church. And so we should leave the question of the flat earth alone because it could lead to confrontation between round earthers or, you know, people with intelligence and people who are ignorant. And this would cause a problem. Okay. Funny how he doesn't have this theory when it comes to women's ordination. Adam received dominion before Eve was even created. They were to be as one, but there was a hierarchy. But when it comes to the covenant, it is always with the men. But the covenant was something that was handed down in a hierarchical system that God had set up. And it was called the patriarchal system. And it's not very favorably viewed in the days that we live in. It was simply a hierarchy that God had set in place, as he has with the angelic host as well. Do you think that the devil would hate everything that was instituted in Eden. And as the master of reversal, he would want to take the whole plan and reverse it and set it up in a different fashion. In fact, the ten toes that the Bible is concerned with will be run by women. By asking the governments of the world the new, friendlier, kinder, gentler leaders of the world, to implement legislation that will honor the first beast. Or evolution. Creation versus evolution. The two are totally incompatible. Now people are trying to, to compromise and put them together. But of course, the one negates the other completely. Now, when I was at my university, if I ever spoke about evolution, I would say, the theory of evolution says, at some stage they would say, excuse me, what do you say? And I would say to them, it's not part of the curriculum. But if you want to know, 
then arrange a lecture after hours and I'll tell you. So eventually I would give a lecture after hours and then the students would take this back into the other classes and this would create, can you guess? Major confrontation. Major confrontation. Or any number of other topics like Vatican, etc. The climate agenda. The Bible warns us that just before the end there will be an increase in calamities. Humanity is trying to solve a problem that God said would be inevitable. And is it one of the, the ways in which they can combat climate change by compulsory Sunday keeping? Yes. Yes. There is the temptation to take care only of our own interests, he added. Now basically where he's going, he's saying that if you don't get vaccinated, you are a danger to others. Correct. This is as much a religious war mm -hmm. as it is a medical issue. So the way the governments are handling the vaccine, you don't have a choice either. You don't have a choice. They're singing the tune of the Vatican. I'll take an example. I don't drink anymore. So if you require me to start drinking again to work here, then I'm going to say sorry then I have to make an, another choice. We cannot allow the spirit of Antichrist to dictate to us what we should do because we have very clear directives from God as to how we should approach disease. Mm. Stay away from drugs is an admonition that we have. So what is our bottom line? The World Health Organization warns the pandemic is not necessarily the big one. We've been saying all along this is a stepping stone. In those cases, he has absolutely no problems with conflict and confrontation. So what makes this issue so different? Oh, I know. It's because he gets lots of questions on it, which means that a lot of his audience are flat earthers, which means that if he was to talk about this issue in a way that was contradictory to their views, they would stop watching him. So obviously it's in his own political interest to avoid a topic that would bring his ministry into conflict with his hundreds of thousands of, of, of listeners. No, better to keep those. He can talk about other people in conflict because those people aren't part of his audience. But his audience does include flat earthers. Surprise, surprise. And so he doesn't want to piss them off. Hmm, that's some real good prophetic backbone you've got there, Professor Vyth. Good, good backbone. And the gospel will be lost in, in the commotion. So... We at Amazing Discoveries are not going to get involved in that debate, no. which doesn't mean that we don't study it, but we won't get involved in the debate. Right. Correct. Okay, that's just insane. That's just insane. I'm sorry, if you can't, if you can't state the most basic fact that the world is round, if this has to be a debate for you, I mean, obviously it really isn't. He just wants to protect his audience and, and a bunch of other unfortunate peripheral issues. But it just points out how hypocritical this is, just how stupid this is. It, it's, this isn't even a biblical scholarship issue. Now, however, however, because I am a biblical scholar and someone is probably curious, does the Bible teach that the world is flat? The answer is yes. There, there are verses in the Bible that clearly show that the biblical writers understood a flat earth. But again, that don't matter. They were wrong. And as certainly as an Adventist, but most Christians, that's not a problem. They were ancient people. First of all, the Bible's not written by God. It's written by people, historical people. Okay, God inspires them, but they're writing with their own mind, their own words, all of that. I mean, even Ellen White was of that opinion. And the fact of the matter is, the fact that they believed wrong things about the Earth's geography is really not a problem. That's just normal. Everyone believed that. That's fine. When you find those verses in the Bible that suggest a flat earth, that's okay. It's okay to admit that they were wrong. The real issue, if you're struggling with that, the real issue is that you struggle with the doctrine of inerrancy, which Adventism rejects. And certainly anyone with intelligence in Christianity has to come to reject because it is 
indefendable. Now, the infallibility of the Bible, the idea that God's messages always come through, that the Bible's purposes uh, are, are sustainable, that's a different argument. But the idea that there's no error in the Bible, and if you find something in the Bible, you've got to throw everything away because it's got to be whatever the Bible says. Because if God is wrong at the very outset of the book, then how much faith can you have in the rest of the book? If God cannot be trusted on the question of origins, how can he be trusted on the question of prophecy? Now, good grief, if he gets that wrong, then what's the probability of him getting the future right? Nothing, zero. So the whole credibility of God, the whole credibility of the Bible, actually hinges upon this point. This is just illustrated with the insanity of a flat earth. It, just because the Bible has verses that clearly show that the writers believed in a flat earth has absolutely zero to do with whether or not we believe in a flat earth. Okay? That, this is just ridiculous. So anyways, yes, there is a reason why these uh, sort of individuals are so obsessed with the question. The question is not really the problem in, in their case. It's the fact that they're obsessed over inerrancy. That's their real problem. They are reading the Bible in a fundamentally flawed way, and so they're hung up over issues they should not be hung up or hung up over. However, for Vyth, the fact that he will not address this issue is just cowardly. And it's pathetic. This whole this whole question answer session on a flat Earth was pathetic. Come on, you got to do better than this. Because everybody has a brain, I assume, and everybody has the capacity to decide for themselves whether something is credible or whether something is incredible. All right. Well, I hope that you liked that video. Actually, I hope you didn't. I, that was that was painful for me to go through. But in any case, I hope you click that like button. And I hope you went ahead and click the subscribe button and ring that bell to find out when the next Bible Scholar React episode comes out. But until then, I bid you farewell. Stay sane, my friends. I'll catch you later. I mean, these are very, very interesting. interesting questions. Yes.